Welcome back to the crop production series by New Farm, your solutions based company. We've had growers in the field ask us questions about plant growth regulators, especially in the springtime. Everybody needs a little help sometimes, even though your cultural practices might be absolutely perfect. The weather will impact you. Actually, the sales will impact you too. If sales slow down, then you have to hold crops longer than you want to. So this is a discussion about the plant growth regulators that are registered for use in greenhouse and nursery production and how best to use these products to help you achieve your goals. Your options for growth restriction in the greenhouse include these active ingredients, ancimidol, chloramaquat, daminazide, fluprimidol, paclobutrazole, and euconazole. To expand the growth of the plant materials, to hurry them along, you'll use benzylatidine and the gibberellins. And focused on branching agents would include dicagulex sodium and ethophon. The activity of A-Rest or Abide reduces plant internodes via restriction of cell elongation. So it can be used as a spray, but as a drench, it really remains active in the plant for nearly a month. So one application per month to drench is all that's required. The activity of the material is moderate. The active ingredient percentage is 0 0.026. So spray concentrations will be from six to 66 parts per million in the label. The drench concentration is from one to two parts per million. This can be applied, like I said, either as a drench or a spray and a dip. So you need to hit the root system or the foliage for it to be active. Even as a spray, no surfactant is required. The reentry interval is 12 hours. Cyclocell was the first PGR discovered back in the 1950s at Michigan State University. The internode elongation is restricted with this material, but flowering is promoted as well. The active ingredient percentage of Cyclocell is 11.8%. It's relatively low active, so you're going to have a higher spray concentration, parts per million of 800 to 1500. And as a drench, you're going to go at a higher rate of 2000 to 3000 parts per million. So besides those two application techniques, you can use it as a dip, but you have to contact either the foliage or the roots. No surfactant is required. The reentry interval is only 12 hours. B9 is a familiar product in the greenhouse industry. Used as a spray application only, usually on young plant starts. It's highly systemic material and works well in the cooler temperatures, which is where we're working with primarily in the early springtime. It's an 85% powdered active ingredient. The activity is a low concentration activity, so higher concentrations are required at 1,250 to 2,500 parts per million. And as a foliar spray, it still requires no surfactant. This product has a reentry interval of 24 hours. Top Floor is a relatively new product uh, used in Europe since the 1990s. It's uh, similar in activity to A-Rest, but a little bit more active. Drench applications are highly effective and chemigation is permitted on this label. The active ingredient percentage is 0.38 as a liquid. It's very active and the concentrations will be lower because of that. So from one to 80 parts per million as a spray and 0.01 to 2.5 parts per million as a drench. So it's applied either as a spray, a dip, or a drench, and it affects all the leaves, stems, and root systems. Of course, as a drench material, no surfactant would be needed, and the reentry interval is only 12 hours. Paxol or Paclobutrazole is the most widely used plant growth regulator today, and it's best to use when the stems are contacted. So when you spray, you've got to get through the canopy and get it into the stem for translocation in the plant. The, the application needs to be dry for 30 minutes after application because it will be removed with water. The effects are long term with this product. And so as a liquid, the active ingredient percentage is only 0.4% very active material, so the concentrations are going to be low from 2.5 to 90 parts per million as a spray, and one part per million as a drench. 
So again, it's a, it can be applied as a spray, a dip, or a drench, and you need to get it to the stems and the roots. No surfactant is required, and there's a 12-hour re-entry interval with this material. Uniconazole, or Sumagic, is the most active and persistent plant growth regulator for height control, making it the best option primarily in vegetable production as well as ornamentals, but uh, the, you treat it one time after transplant and they're good for the entire growing cycle, generally speaking. With uh, vegetables, they're going to get leggier and they're very active growers, so you can do multiple applications with uh, vegetable crops. The active ingredient percentage is 0.55. The activity is extremely high, so you're working with one to 50 parts per million and you would really want to start out with one part per million and do multiple applications since you will get an additive effect. You, you really can't pull backs, but you can do multiple uh, low part per million applications to get the effect you desire. And the drench application is going to be, again, percentage wise less. So it's 0.1 to two parts per million. So again, apply it as a spray dip or drench and you want to impact the stems and roots. The reactor interval is 12 hours. Our benzyl adenine is called Rightway. This is a cytokinin. It's used to increase branching and flower set on select crops, including Christmas cactus, hosta, and echinacea. It is a liquid, 1.9% active ingredient. The activity is high on this material, so the concentrations will range from a low of 100 parts per million to 3,000 parts per million on hard to affect crops. It is a foliage spray only material and its surfactant is required. The re-entry interval for this product is 12 hours. Projib TNO is the gibberellic acid we're using here. They're extremely active. Uh, PGR is enhancing the plant's natural gibberellin production, inducing flower production, more flowers and larger sized flowers, plus stem elongation it also can cause the plant to overcome dormancy and improved uh, plant performance and cold tolerance. So this is a liquid material. It's 4% active ingredient. The activity of the gibberellic acid is extremely high. So you're going to be working with 50 to 500 parts per million in the label recommendations. Um, and you're going to apply it to the stems as a spray and the foliage. Surfactant is not required, and the reentry interval is just 12 hours. Dicagulac sodium, or agio, reduces apical dominance, dominance on plants in the greenhouse or the nursery setting. Lower rates are for the softer crops. The higher rates are for the woody plants. Do not apply this product in cool weather. So this is a liquid, 18.5% active ingredient. The activity level is medium, so the concentrations are from 400 to 4,800 parts per million. As a spray only, you want to hit the stems and the foliage. No surfactant is required, and it's only a four-hour re-entry interval, which is pretty good. Ethafon, or Verve, does not inhibit gibberellic acid production in the plant, but within the cell, it converts to ethylene, which then limits the elongation of the cell, but expands the cell width at the same time. It also reduces apical dominance, which releases the lateral branching aspect of the plant. So with a, a more expanded cell width and lateral branching, you have a more robust, stouter plant. The active ingredient percentage of Verve is 21.7%. Florel is 3.9%, both liquids. Its activity is relatively low, so you're going to have concentration rates from 100 to 5,000 parts per million. So it's only applied as a spray, and it can be used as a dip, but it needs to be put on the foliage as a spray for active really growing plants. And so a surfactant is required, and the restriction on reentry is 48 hours. The last product on the list is a product called Fascination. It's a combination of the cytokinins plus the gibberellic acids. This unique combination of PGRs really enhances the normal plant hormones, and it really focuses on increased branching and flower count as well as the flower size. As a plant now becomes more full in the pot, it, it looks much better, and it also aids in delaying plant aging. So it's like a 
fountain of youth for plants that you want to keep in the pots for a little longer time. It is a liquid. Both uh, combination products are at 1.8% active ingredient percentage. Very active. So you start off with from 1 to 100 parts per million. And when people call and ask me about this, I say you'll start off at 1 to 2 per parts per million. And you can always add on and treat the plants after 2 or 3 days because you'll start to see the effect of the uh, fascination very quickly. It is a full foliar applied only material and a surfactant is required. And best of all, the re-entry interval is only four hours. So in summary, these are the plant growth regulators that are registered to maintain your schedule and production. For growth restriction, arrest, cyclocell, B9, top floor, Paxol and Sumagic. For growth expansion, right way. For branching agents which also expand growth, Progib TNO, Verve, Ario, and the combination discussed last in our list was Fascination, which combines the cytokinins and the gibberellic acids in the right uh, ratio to produce plants that are full, uh, more flowers, and uh, robust. So You'll notice that five of these materials are manufactured by New Farm out of the total 11. It's another way that we support the growers in the field to provide you with the tools to make your job a little bit easier. Thanks for listening. We'll have another training session coming up later.